1984 crash test of a Boeing 720, carried out by NASA and the FAA. The controlled impact demonstration was a joint project between NASA and the Federal Aviation Administration that intentionally crashed a remotely controlled Boeing 720 aircraft to acquire data and test new technologies to aid passenger and crew survival. The crash required more than four years of preparation by NASA Ames Research Center, Langley Research Center, Dryden Flight Research Center, the FAA, and General Electric. After numerous test runs, the plane was crashed on December 1, 1984. The test went generally according to plan, and produced a spectacular fireball that required more than an hour to extinguish. The FAA concluded that about one quarter of the passengers would have survived, that the anti-misting kerosene test fuel did not sufficiently reduce the risk of fire, and that several changes to equipment in the passenger compartment of aircraft were needed. NASA concluded that a head-up display and microwave landing system would have helped the pilot more safely fly the aircraft. NASA and the Federal Aviation Administration conducted a joint program for the acquisition, demonstration, and validation of technology for the improvement of transport aircraft occupant crash survivability using a large, four-engine, remotely piloted transport airplane in a controlled impact demonstration. The SID program was conducted at the Dryden Flight Research Facility of NASA Ames Research Center, at Edwards, California, using a remotely controlled Boeing 720 transport, and was completed in late 1984. The objectives of the SID program were to demonstrate a reduction of post-crash fire through the use of antimisting fuel, acquire transport crash structural data, and to demonstrate the effectiveness of existing improved seat restraint and cabin structural systems. The Boeing 720 was purchased new by the FAA in 1960 as a training aircraft. The aircraft was turned over to NASA Ames Dryden Flight Research Center for the SID program in 1981. AMK had demonstrated the capability to inhibit ignition and flame propagation of the released fuel in simulated impact tests. AMK cannot be introduced directly into a gas turbine engine due to several possible problems such as clogging of filters. The AMK must be restored to almost JETA before being introduced into the engine for burning. Each of the four Pratt & Whitney JT3C7 engines had a degrader built and installed by General Electric to break down and return the AMK to near JETA quality. In addition to the AMK research, NASA Langley Research Center was involved in a structural load measurement experiment, which included using instrumented crash dummies in the seats of the passenger compartment and cockpit. Before the final flight in 1984, more than four years of effort was expended in attempting to establish final impact conditions which would be considered to be survivable by the FAA. Over a series of 14 flights, General Electric installed and tested four degraders, the FAA refined AMK, blending, testing, and fueling a full-size aircraft. During the flights the aircraft made approximately 69 approaches, to about 150 feet above the prepared crash site, under remote control. These flights were used to introduce AMK one step at a time into some of the fuel tanks and engines while monitoring the performance of the engines. During those same flights, NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center also developed the remote piloting techniques necessary for the Boeing 720 to fly as a drone aircraft. An initial attempt at the full-scale test was scrubbed in late 1983 due to problems with the uplink connection to the 720. If the uplink failed the ground-based pilot would no longer have control of the aircraft. On the morning of December 1, 1984, the test aircraft took off from Edwards Air Force Base, California, made a left-hand departure and climbed to an altitude of 2,300 feet. The aircraft was remotely flown by NASA research pilot Fitzhugh Fulton from the NASA Dryden Remotely Controlled Vehicle Facility. All fuel tanks were filled with a total of 76,000 pounds of AMK and all engines ran from startup to impact on the modified jet A. It then began a descent to landing along the roughly 3.8-degree glide slope to a specially prepared runway on the east side of Rogers Dry Lake, with the landing gear remaining retracted. Passing the decision height of 150 feet above ground level, the aircraft turned slightly to the right of the desired path. The aircraft entered into a situation known as a Dutch roll. The aircraft was below the glide slope and below the desired airspeed. Data acquisition systems had been activated, and the aircraft was committed to impact. The aircraft contacted the ground, left wing low, at full throttle, with the aircraft nose pointing to the left of the centerline. It had been planned that the aircraft would land wings level, with the throttles set to idle, and exactly on the centerline during the SID, thus allowing the fuselage to remain intact as the wings were sliced open by eight posts cemented into the runway. One of the rhinos sliced through the number three engine, behind the burner can, leaving the engine on the wing pylon, which does not typically happen in an impact of this type. 
The cutting of the number 3 engine in the full throttle situation was significant, as this was outside the test envelope. The number 3 engine continued to operate for approximately one third of a rotation, degrading the fuel and igniting it after impact, providing a significant heat source. The SID impact was spectacular with a large fireball created by the number 3 engine on the right side, enveloping and burning the aircraft. From the standpoint of AMK the test was a major setback. For NASA Langley, the data collected on crashworthiness was deemed successful and just as important. The actual impact demonstrated that the antimisting additive tested was not sufficient to prevent a post-crash fire in all circumstances, though the reduced intensity of the initial fire was attributed to the effect of AMK. FAA investigators estimated that 23 to 25 percent of the aircraft's full complement of 113 people could have survived the crash. As a result of analysis of the crash, the FAA instituted new flammability standards for seat cushions which required the use of fire-blocking layers, resulting in seats which performed better than those in the test. It also implemented a standard requiring floor proximity lighting to be mechanically fastened, due to the apparent detachment of two types of adhesive fastened emergency lights during the impact. NASA concluded that the impact piloting task was of an unusually high workload, which might have been reduced through the use of a heads-up display, the automation of more tasks, and a higher resolution monitor.